it is my honor and my thrill to uh, introduce to you two amazing women who will be speaking uh, with us on a one-to-one -one type conversation between myself and them. Uh, so we have with us this evening at the Virtual Female Majlis, Fahima Albastaki, who will be introducing us, uh, introducing herself to us in a few moments, and the amazing Raha Moharak. Now, uh, so what I'd like to do before we actually move into our introduction pieces, I'd like to give everyone an introduction of why we're here and what Top of Our Game is all about. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to share my screen. Inshallah, this will work because it worked uh, earlier. And so I should be able to, see, it didn't work because there it is. Aha, there it is. So I'm going to share my screen. Can you see that? Now, is it working? Hold on, let me press share, that would be useful. Can you see that now? Just nod, I th Abir is nodding. Yes, excellent. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. So let me give you a bit of an introduction on the female Majlis and the virtual version that we've now introduced in, in the midst of the COVID-19, um, unfortunately, pandemic. Um, so, uh, I, uh, my name is Christina Ioannidis and I run a company called Aquitude and for many years I've been doing a lot of programs around women in leadership and how to engage with women on behalf of brands as well as training women to reach their ultimate potential. So I'm an absolute fan of women worldwide. I've written a, a book on the subject as well and why women um, are not progressing to boards of businesses, and we'll talk about that a bit later. Um, but when I came here for the first time, I realized there's a lot of support for um, expat women, but I hadn't seen, and this is back in 2009, much of support for local women. So I thought, I'm going to change this, and I created Top of a Game. Top of a Game is a program that aims to kind of break stereotype, stereotypes of Arab women, and to encourage them to um, fuel their ambitions. And the way we do this is through a number of, uh, of phases. So if you see this little triangle that we've got here, at the bottom, uh, we have the top of our game, uh, uh, social media channels, and we aim through our content to generate engagement with women by breaking stereotypes of women in the GCC by showcasing amazing women like both Raha and uh, Fahima. And we also then, in, under normal circumstances, run the Female Majlis, which is the region's first peer mentoring um, format, private dinners where women get together with a distinguished guest, but we also uh, create an environment where women can support each other through one-to-one -one conversations. And the aim of these is to drive a deeper connection. This isn't just about networking and just exchanging uh, cards. It's about really understanding what challenges women might be facing and how other women who may, nest, who may be in the room or virtually could help them. Now we're ex you're actually experiencing the virtual format of this. Fahima has also, and both Raha, have uh, experienced the physical and now they're doing the virtual as well. So in this event, we're going to experience exactly what we do in the in-person format. We're going to do it virtually. And then at the top of the triangle, uh, we're in the process of launching the Top of Our Game Academy, where we do talent development for individuals and corporates, uh, so large companies as well. So providing training and development for women to really fuel their uh, and achieve their, their dreams. As you can tell by the color of my hair, it's not just purely shiny. I've been around a little bit longer than most of you. So this is on the back of hard earned experience uh, that we run these particular uh, training and leadership uh, programs. So that's in summary, what we do through Top of Our Game and the Female Majlis. Now, what we're going to do today and these are the rules of engagement before we move on to our conversation with Raha and Fahima. Uh, you will actually be doing something completely new today. So please be open. I know, uh, Mashallah, you all are uh, open-minded because you've self-selected to be here. What I wanted to remind you is that this is a safe environment. So as part of the event, you will be holding conversations 
with other women from the region. I think Fahima said that we've got someone here from Kuwait. Raha is in Saudi. We've got, we've got, we've got someone even from North America, uh, Cynthia. So you will be meeting women from completely different parts of the world. Um, at the end of the event, if you want to connect with a person that you were paired with or that uh, you found inspirational, uh, and they agree, we're more than happy to connect you. Uh, so let me know at the end or after the event, you should have received various emails from us. Uh, reach out and, you know, and ask and I will do my best to connect you because the point of all of this is to create an environment where women support each other and where women are, uh, yeah, we're creating a sisterhood as I like uh, to call it. So that's the introduction on, on what we're doing today. I will stop sharing my screen and uh, I, we will go back to our guests. And we've got the wonderful Fahima. Can we start with you? And Raha will then move on to you. Fahima, if you unmute yourself, would you kindly uh, give us a brief introduction about yourself? I know that I could do it, but I want, I want everyone to hear it from literally from you. <laughs> I think you're muted, so you, you need to, let me unmute you. I'll unmute you. Okay, let's see. Hold on. For some reason, I can't. Oh, there you are. I can do it from my side. Okay. Perfect. Uh, yeah, thank you, Christina. Thank you, ladies. Uh, it's wonderful to see some of the known uh, people and faces over here. I, can, I can't mention all of them, but uh, thank you very much for joining. I'm very delighted to be with Raha as well. Uh, such an hi, Raha. It's really wonderful. Actually, when Christina first told me that I will be with you, I said, oh my God, it's totally different world. <laughs> it's totally different sectors. But maybe one day I will join you in one of the, your trips, uh, even though I'm a little bit scary cat, but it's fine. <laughs> So uh, yes, I mean, for myself, I mean, for those who does not know me, um, I'm a mother of uh, four children. I am, um, uh, uh, of course, I have a great supportive husband and um, good parents as a role models, as well as, um, I mean, good uh, team that I'm working with. I'm very blessed to have that. Uh, I have 22 years experience in the financial sector, specifically in banking and capital markets, which is the stock market. Um, I, I think that's all about me. I mean, this is the brief that I wanted to give Christina, if you want to add anything else. I mean, I'm uh, working for Dubai Financial as head of uh, business development division, um, one of the executive directors in BFM, but as well as I'm also holding a position of a board member of Dubai Women's Establishment. In the past, um, this is my third year going on. So hopefully, you know, like um, I've always been um, uh, supportive to areas of women empowerment, but also uh, youth uh, development, um, especially in, in areas that are growing. Uh, and also recently with the sustainability of corporates as well, which includes women and the overall economic development. I'm very interested in the economy and anything to do with the development of our um, region. Thank you very much. Yuma, can I mention your award from the International Alliance for Women as well on supporting the economic empowerment of, uh, of women. So congratulations once again. Thank you, <laughs> well, well, Christina. Accolade, <laughs> which you deserve wholeheartedly. Uh, Raha, can we move over to you? Just a very, very brief introduction for those who are, have been living under a rock and don't know you. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, everybody. Thank you so much for your time. Christina, thank you so much for inviting me. I've been a fan of your whole concept and, of course, the theme of that just, uh, When was the first one we did? Two years ago now. I think um, it was 2016. 16, but I really appreciate everyone's time. Um, long story short, uh, I was born in Jeddah an absolute troublemaker to my parents. Um, but I still try to play with the rules uh, that I was given. I, I finished school, I finished college, I graduated, I worked in Leo Burnett as an art director, and then um, I got hit by the reality of the pressure of the social expectation. So I, I reached an age, and this age every single woman reaches. It's, it's different from family to family and culture to culture. For me, it was a few years ago. I reached a specific age, and they were like, yeah, it's now for time for the Aris and you have to like 
settle down and, and relax. I think my family were, were letting me run wild and loose until that point. And when those two things collided, my desire to, to run wild and free and my parents' desire for me to settle down, because this is kind of, you know, it, it, it's very common, right? And I think it's amazing when it's the right time. But during that moment in my life, I wasn't ready. So I decided to do something crazy, um, mainly to drive my parents insane. So I went and I climbed the mountain. I never imagined that this mountain would lead me to fall in love with mountaineering. And I continued to climb one mountain after the other, after, after another. The higher they got, the more I was happy, the more dangerous, the more I was happy, the more my, my dad had gray hair. You guys should have a chat because he also <laughs> has seen a lot in his life. And then at some point in my career, when I thought I reached the, the pinnacle of my craziness, I saw Everest uh, uh, on one of my hikes and then I decided to, to climb it. And um, I climbed this little mountain in the Himalayas. That's not very important. What was important was the fact that I was a Saudi woman who was born in the desert, yet I managed to climb and stand on the highest mountain in each continent, um, which is very difficult for people in general, but specifically for us in the region because of a lot of the mentality and a lot of the, 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 the rules and guidelines that are mistaken as, as um, traditional culture. It was very difficult. Uh, flash forward, uh, now it's been five, six years. I'm super blessed and happy to be a spokesperson for women in sports in the region. Uh, I became a, a Special Olympics ambassador. I am a Tag Heuer ambassador. I've worked with so many brands. And the thing that I am proud of the most is being able to prove to the region uh, in specific that women are capable of doing whatever they want and to prove to the world that Arab women are, are amazing uh, uh, individuals with incredible potential. We just need to have the, the courage to go after them. Um, thank you so much for, for letting me share my story, Christina. I really appreciate it. Oh, and so that's my story in a nutshell. <laughs> <laughs> There's more coming. Everyone is obviously clapping for you because you are amazing. So Fahima, just to, just to clarify why I invited Raha to be part of this, um, there is a wonderful parallel between what you're doing and you're passionate about about women reaching the boardroom and the pinnacle of business and Raha's achievement of climbing the highest summit in the world. So for me, there's a beautiful parallel there that you both um, sit in, in that what is a, a, a unique position to influence, but also inspire the younger generations, inshallah, who are coming uh, behind you. So on that note, a, a question for you, Fahima, what was the biggest challenge you had to work through in your very long and successful career? And how did you overcome it? Mm. Okay, thank you, Christina. I think, um, see, I, I can say that I am actually blessed uh, not to have a lot of challenges um, that was really very, very difficult to pass on. I think uh, maybe I am a little bit uh, very adaptive, uh, positive. Mm. I mean, I, I look at things when it comes through that maybe it's not meant for me or, and then I always take it back. And even if there's a challenge, I would always look at it from, um, you know, I always love to do this positive and negatives and what's pro and con, you know, I always enjoyed this pro and con uh, things, even when I was uh, little. So um, I can tell you like one of the real challenges that I, and, and did and had, a, uh, it was a step where I actually changed uh, my life totally into getting into the capital market, which is the stock market and investments. Um, it's, it's actually related to my career. So I was working in a bank and I was blessed to be respond. I was in a program where after a few years, uh, I was responsible for a big team of 11 um, members. And I was enjoying working for um, a group that uh, and leading the team, uh, enjoying my uh, supervision and learning the leadership skills and, you know, uh, being with the, uh, achieve, I mean, just to work on, on, on a team uh, basis. Um, and then suddenly something came up, which was a little bit uh, surprising, but it opened my eyes. There was a, a, a program which was introduced by the bank and that program uh, was to become, to step down of being a supervisor or having subordinates 
uh, and a team leader to something that was totally an individual work. So I, uh, the, the opportunity was to become a financial advisory, um, certified financial advisor. And to be that, you will be totally disconnected with the whole banking uh, team, which was in the branch. And your reporting line would be with someone that sits in London and that you are under monitoring all the time because, you know, there's something called the regularity that, you know, monitors all the advices that we will give to the clients. So I had to, so the decision and the challenge that I took at that time was the people who were advising me. So many people told me uh, that you are a woman, you are married. At that time, I had Shama, my daughter, uh, at six years old. And I was just delivered my son, and he was not even one year old at that time when the program was launched. So many people told me, you will go through a very big selective, uh, thousands of people who will apply, and you can't do it, and there's a time consuming, you have to go through examinations. And why do you want to do it? Now you are already an officer, and you might get a promotion soon. And that time was I was not yet promoted, and it was about to, yani. So... Uh, I thought I took all people's opinion, uh, but I really felt bad when some people related that to for me being a woman and a wife and that I'm not going to take care of my children and that I'm going to forget about visiting my family, my parents, and you know, I will be fully dedicating working in the morning and the afternoons, carrying my books uh, on my shoulders with a stroller and holding my daughter's hand maybe going, I enjoyed it actually, going to coffee shops and doing the studies uh, after work. Uh, now, the, the point I was going to make, it, so I, I actually decided with all these challenges that I faced, I went through the selection and I am proud to say that out of 100 that were finally selected, uh, the people who actually made it were 10. And I was one of the two women out of 10, uh, they were all men, and only two women got selected and I was one of them. So Alhamdulillah, you know, like I did it from the selection point of view. Uh, I was worried that I will fail exams. I did fail one exam, but still it made me uh, do it. And uh, finally I got, I, I became a certified financial advisor. Now the message I am trying to make from this, uh, I don't want to take much longer on this, but the message I'm trying to say is that decision-making, it all depends on your attitude to risk. And I think my attitude to risk for challenges are very high. Uh, I always like to take uh, something which is unique, which is new, which is an eye opener. And I think a woman, and unfortunately, in order for her to really be, as Raha did it, in order for her to be really visible or people to actually, uh, you know, like endorse her capability, is if she, if she does something which is a little bit new and unique and that not everybody around could do it. So maybe that drives me even more to actually have it. And um, luckily there were areas that at that time, I'm talking about uh, many, many years ago now. It was 2002 actually. Uh, at that time, the stock market were just open. We didn't have taxation. We didn't have proper pension, pension funds and things like that. And imagine whatever I have studied, it was all about what the future of Dubai would, would have the uh, UAE would be. So what helped me that even though it was a challenge, but I saw the fruit of it later on, because when I moved to the capital market, this background that I have done and, you know, sacrificing my promotion, my movement higher in the bank helped me to the transmission for me in the capital market was much faster and the moving to leadership positions was much easier later on. So I think uh, patience is also another message that I wanted to give. Like, you know, decision-making is all about uh, where do you see yourself? What's your attitude to risk? And looking ahead, uh, don't look long, uh, short-term, look a very, uh, be a long-term uh, vision, have a visionary of the long-term. And I think that's all. I think that's one of the challenges that I really faced. And Alhamdulillah, you know, like I passed it and I saw the fruits. Thank you. Congratulations. I admire women like you, Fahima. I could not imagine doing what you did with children in tow, doing exams, working your day job and succeeding. So, mashallah, congratulations. Raha, um, I, you are, this, this is a beautiful... Uh, How can I top that? Come on, that's not <laughs> fair. How can I top <laughs> Kids? <laughs> You've had your first year of challenges. Mashallah, amazing. I mean, come on, Christina, you're, you're putting me... <laughs> 
<laughs> no, no, relax. Wallah, I, because I have a daughter uh, that is maybe your age. I mean, Shamma is with us. She's 24. And uh, it's good to hear oh, from you. Oh, you thought I was 24? Wallahi, you're my favorite person. <laughs> 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 this is this is this is okay. I accept. I accept coming after. <laughs> but I, I consider you, Mashallah. Yani, excellent. We'd like Thank to hear from you and learn from you. Thank you. So tell us. I mean, we know what Mount Everest would have been a big challenge. Yeah. Tell us more about that because I know the story, but the ladies here don't know how hard so, you had. To work. <laughs> whenever people tell me what was the more the most difficult mountain you've ever had to climb. I tell them it's not on the map. It wasn't one of the mountains that I actually had to climb because even before I had to, even before I had to go to the mountain, even before I had to train, before I had to find the gear, I had to climb that mountain of of acceptance by by my my peers, my society, my family. My my father thought I was insane. He still says this. He says when she came up to me with this idea. I was like, she lost it. Like she, she's, she's losing her mind. So that emotional mountain that I had to overcome was by far the most difficult one because it, it, it wasn't just one mountain that you just, you know, you climb, you come down. I live it. You had to live the fact that you are different. You have to live. I, someone wrote, I hear you. I hear you guys too. I mean, this is, this is a thing that most women go through. And I always say that, uh, not everybody can climb Everest, that's in the Himalayas, but every single one of us has an Everest to climb. Um, everybody has these, these things that they overcome. And for me, it was being able to withstand and, and still be me, despite so many people um, telling me I, I shouldn't be myself, uh, or what I'm doing is wrong, or this is not a career, or you shouldn't leave your job because it's not safe. This wasn't easy for me. Imagine, like I, I had to just quit my job and put all my savings into mountaineering. So the, the most difficult thing I, I would say is the, the inner fight with myself, that, that, that inner mountain that you have to overcome of, of like, like that was mentioned, um, uh, fear and doubt and failure, the feel of failure is the most difficult thing for me, for sure, because we are our own worst critics. We, before we even share everybody around us with our ideas, we tell ourselves first that you can't. And we're kind of programmed to think within that, um, that, that mind frame. So it, it, it's very difficult to step out of it. And to me, that was by far the most difficult thing. And mountaineering was difficult, ladies. Please, I always joke about it because I, I have that kind of sense of humor. Haha, <laughs> I'm in pain. But it, it was very painful and very uh, hard and very taxing and, and soul crushing. Uh, but that all meant nothing if I wasn't me, if I, if I still had to give up who I was. Um, and I'm so happy that I didn't. And that, this is why I like to share my story because if, if a Saudi woman from Jeddah managed to convince her father who literally uh, gave me an ultimatum. He said, you have to move back to Saudi Arabia and find a husband. He was telling me marriage and I was telling him mountains. You have to understand the contrast. If I managed to get this dad on my side, then none of your dreams and aspirations should make you choose between being a mom and a boss or being a kick-ass architect and the best wife. Or me, in my case, being a, a, a badass mountaineer and a feminine girl because that was one of the biggest worries my family had was what, what will people say? Because it's always that, right? It's always what will people say. Um, so we should never choose. And the biggest challenge is finding the courage to not make that choice because we shouldn't. We shouldn't have to make that choice. Brilliant. I hope you see now, Fahima, why I think you both are very, very similar, even though in a very <laughs> different context, because it is that emotional uh, roller coaster and emotional challenge that one has to overcome, irrespective of whether it's in business or in sport or in engineering, because we've got uh, Balkis here, or in, uh, in, in the marine world, the, the reality is still the same. So the question I have for both of you before we actually split into our, our peer mentoring side of things is what do you recommend to women who are here and who know other women who want to climb their own Everest, as you put it, uh, Raha, 
what do you recommend to them? You mentioned patience, you mentioned not giving up, you mentioned taking risks. Is there anything else, Fahima, that you would add? I think uh, having a great uh, base of um, knowledge, I think knowledge is a key to any woman that wants to actually look ahead. Um, again, uh, being adaptive to change, uh, this is a leadership, adaptive leadership. I think that is a key to, uh, because sometimes in a women's world, even though there are areas which we could believe in that it is powerful and you know we have to show the world what we are doing, but at the same time, you also be, you have to be a little bit adaptive to the environment around you so that you can get acceptance from many people. And sometimes women needs to also use uh, her strategies very well. And Christina, I know that you like strategies and you always in your sessions, you ask about what are the strategies. So I think uh, every woman should have her own, identify her own strategy. And uh, the similarity that I found also with what Raha said and myself is that we both had the courage to leave something which was putting us on a safe side and conservative level to something that was totally uh, vague. I mean, we couldn't see what's going to come. But we had a feeling that, you know, uh, if we do it, it is going to be a successful thing. So you believe in yourself. I think that is also another key. Believe in what you want to do and work towards that with a, with a true uh, target and objectives being in mind. I always tell this to whoever I mean I see. I mean, I, I hope that I made the message clear. Brilliant. Thank you so much. Raha, what do you recommend then? What are your strategies for the women who are here? Of course, I echo Fahima's point of view as well. Uh, very important. And also, I would say that uh, find your allies and be an ally. Find the people around you that can join you in your madness uh, and the good kind of madness. Find the people around you that will help you grow and be the person that helps other people grow. The, the, life is difficult. The world is difficult. It On its own, without those people and peers around you that help prop you up when you're down, it's a grueling and terrible place to be. So so open yourself up to try to find these these people. And I, I promise you, if you if you have the, the, the courage and the passion to express and be who you are, you will attract these people around you. And in the same time, avoid the people that are negative, avoid the people that are not the best for you. Uh, you can be the nicest person in the world and still say no. This is something that I had to learn recently. You can be a kind person, you can be a fair person, but also say no and it doesn't suit you. It doesn't grow you, it doesn't uh, give you uh, anything positive. So I always advise people to be the person that you needed when you were at your worst. Try to be that person for someone. And in my case, for example, I didn't have, uh, I had very few, maybe two or three people in the mountaineering world back then who helped me. Uh, it was a husband and couple, uh, uh, Omar Samra and Maru Faid, helped me out and they were an incredible force in my career. So I try to be this person with people. When I get questions on my social media, I, I answer it. And sometimes just answering a, 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 a question, a burning question of someone can, can point them to the right direction or the right uh, person to advance their career. Small things can help. So always try to find these people, always try to, to help people up. You never know what your gesture and what, your, what path you might have pushed the person in. Um, you never know. Uh, um, Christina, if you allow me just to comment on... Uh the uh, Raha's points here. I actually, one of them is I will tell you a recent incident that happened uh, before the COVID-19 at the beginning of 2020. I posted in my personal uh, private uh, group uh, on Snapchat. I mean, I'm very close with my groups on Snap. <laughs> 2020 uh, uh, objectives. And I really put it in a totally different uh, way that I didn't imagine, like one of the things I put is that to go back to my old friends and, and, and connect with them. Uh, one of the areas I said, uh, let, uh, I'm gonna have less to be uh, workaholic or energetic. I wanna be a little bit more relaxed and things like that. And when COVID-19 happened, okay, I was very, very surprised that just before, like two weeks before that, 
I've actually, we've actually created a group with some of my friends and some of them are family friends. I mean, very few, we are only six ladies and we share intellectual discussions like you can't believe it now when we talk about it, you know, through COVID-19. I tell them, you know, this was a blessing before COVID, I mean, before we are all at homes, because if a single day we don't have a chat in that, on the, in that, in this specific group, which are very positive, as Raha said, connect yourself with people who you can actually talk to and be free of, of all the materialistic life, you know, just talk about certain areas. And so we do fun stuff, but at the same, and we started doing games actually, uh, online and uh, it was based on even um, yeah, I mean, not only fun games but also uh, educational games. Uh, it really made a very different, big difference in the way I think. It's not always about family and work and everything. You have to connect yourself with people who will take you to different worlds, like world of books, world of um, of uh, meditation, even you know, like this. So just one more point on what Raha mentioned, which maybe I don't follow. A lot of people tell me, put yourself away from negative people. And my sister actually does it very well. Uh, I don't know why, I've never believed in this. I don't know, That's my. Uh, this is my personal opinion with all respect to what Raha said and even my sister says, keep yourself away from negative people. I don't know why I always put myself very near to the <laughs> negative people. And I try to turn the table or the chair around, you know, and make sure that that negative person actually becomes later on my friend. You know, I believe that uh, put, make your enemies your friend, uh, especially if you are at the work level, uh, if you are at the, um, not people who are shell negative, but there are people who are negative, but they're very important and they are very, um, have something good about them, which not everybody sees. So that's why I'm, I'm very interested to find out these kind of characters. So I just wanted to say my own personal opinion about being away from negative or positive people. Fantastic. I think what Raha and a lot of people refer to is people who may be draining of energy. Exactly. Not necessarily people who, are, who have a different view to you. What you're talking about is someone who may disagree with you, but they may be someone who doesn't drain you. And those are very powerful people because they give you that diversity of views and that, you know, it's good to, to listen and understand where they're coming from, which is also very powerful for Hima. But thank yes. you so much, ladies. Um, this was great. And I'm, I'm so glad that both of you mentioned the support group because this is why we do the female majlis or the virtual female majlis. And this is what I'd like to segue into now is this, the, the, our peer mentoring. We will come back to this main forum as you see it now, um, after we have a quick conversation with someone who is also on this event, okay? So I will explain what's gonna happen. I'm going to share my screen, okay? So I'm going to go back to that uh, document that I was showing you earlier. So where I told you about the, the, the rules of engagement. So what we're going to do now, if I can find my mouse, there it is. We're going to move into the peer mentoring now. So the peer mentoring is uh, essentially we will uh, introduce you to, you will be introduced to someone, you will be paired with someone who is on this event. I can't guarantee, I'm not actually pairing you up. This is happening automatically, okay? So the technology does this. So Raha might be uh, connected with Cynthia or she might be connected with Fahima. I, I cannot, uh, I don't control that. However, what the objective of this is to give you a few minutes, eight in total, to have a conversation. And these, this, these are kind of the questions or the exercise introduce yourself talk about your biggest challenge and then see how the other person can help you okay and the aim is to do it for both of you so then the first person introduces themselves and talks about their challenge and, and then the other person can give them ideas on how they can help them and then and then the pair the other person does this they introduce themselves talk about their challenge and have a discussion on how the other person who they've been paired with can can help them Okay, as I said, you will have eight minutes to do this. Now, we are an odd number on this event, so uh, there may be someone who doesn't get paired or sometimes the technology doesn't work perfectly and you don't get paired, that's okay. Um, stay on the line as it were, so stay on Zoom 
and we'll all come back to this um, forum after eight minutes. I hope that's clear. Does that make sense? Please nod. Yeah? So as I said earlier, please be open. This, this is an opportunity to connect with women who are in a completely different uh, world to you. So you're gonna have eight minutes. I'm going to stop sharing my screen. Are you sure there are no males in this? <laughs> there are no males from what I can see. I have checked, and trust me, I have checked. Uh, so we will all inshallah be paired up. So I'm going to uh, set this up right now. So in one minute, uh, you will be paired up. Hold on. So, inshallah. So, uh, let's do this. I'm doing it in one minute. You'll be paired up. As I said to you earlier, uh, okay. uh, be open and talk through challenges. You'll have eight minutes. I will count down. Okay. okay. So when you've got one minute to go. So, inshallah, enjoy. Uh, Christina, do we press join? Yes, please press join. Please press join so you can get into the same room as the one that you've been allocated. Excellent. Now, I'm going to ask very, very quickly, uh, can someone tell me how, they, how this experience was for them? You'll have to unmute yourself. Raha is giving the thumbs up. So Amazing. It's Cynthia. It Excellent. was amazing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm worried about it. Love you. Excellent. So then I would like in the meantime, I'm going to ask you a question. In the meantime, think of your questions for Raha and for uh, Fahima. Where are you? Where are you? Oh, there you are. Um, mm -hmm. Please think of your questions and type them on the chat because I'd like you, whilst you're doing that, to answer one question. I have a small poll, okay, that I'd like to launch. And I'd like you to please give us your answer. So peer mentoring. Did you enjoy the peer mentoring with other women? It's a, it's a multiple choice question. So you go, yes, I loved it. Yes, not really, no. I would please appreciate your feedback. Um, so we have your feedback. This is very important um, for me. Excellent, so we're looking yes. There's no no's yet, phew, okay. In the meantime, any questions to Fahima and Raha, please uh, type them on chat and I will make sure I get these uh, uh, voiced. So I need to read a few things. There is, a there is actually a comment here, Raha, this is for you. Um, I like how wild Raha is. It's extreme and risky. I feel excited. And this is from Balkis. <laughs> I love that comment. And then we have Hala. Thank you, Balkis. <laughs> Allah <laughs> says, two very inspirational game changers. Correction, they are the game. <laughs> I'm into that. Two peaks to reckon with. Thank you, Hala. Uh, now, there is one message. Uh, oh, Mariam, that's okay. You have a noisy background. That's okay. So we're happy then with the Fiuma Majlis, how it went. You love the peer mentoring. Wonderful. Any questions? I'm going to close the poll right now. Do we have any questions? for Fahima or for Raha right now? I will ask one, I know Dana is online. So Dana Alali is the one who um, left you that comment, by the way, Raha. So Dana, Dana, put your camera on, are you on? Is she back? I'm coming. You're coming, you're coming. So Dana, inshallah, will be the first Emirati female from Abu Dhabi to climb Mount Everest. Oh, Dana, please, if you need any advice, <laughs> contact me. So, Definitely. Thanks, Raha. My she pleasure. Is, she is someone who definitely understands the, the mountains that you talked about. And this one was a big one with COVID-19, unfortunately. So she, she was ready to go. <laughs> Inshallah, next year, Habibti. Inshallah. Inshallah. <laughs> so any, any questions? I have wonderful comments. Thank you for that. Do we have any questions for Fahima and for Raha right now? Mm -hmm. Christina, maybe because the people are already here, if instead of typing, they can just freely ask the question through the... Um... Sure, they can, they can. Oh, there we go. We've got Lal uh, Lalitia. Fahima, did you pursue any additional education during your career? Okay, yes, I did, actually. Uh, so uh, in addition to being a certified financial advisor, um, I'm also a certified, um, accredited director. So I did uh, my accreditation with Hawkama. 
And also I'm a graduate of a women on board program uh, here in Dubai. Uh, I also did my CIRO, which is Certified Invest Investor Relation Officer, uh, because part of my work is uh, to do with the um, international investors. So we ha I had to be that. I, mean, I, had, I had to take that uh, certification. Uh, actually, I'm missing uh, not to have uh, uh, my master's degree, but I'm looking into this option and anything that comes up. I mean, um, I always try to find the time where I can get into more. Thank you. Thanks for that, Fahima. Welcome, dear. Uh, Balkis, Raha, were you the only woman in the group climbing the mountain of Everest? Tell us more about the group you were with and how diverse and inclusive they were. Oh, what a great question. Great question. So, okay, on Everest, I was, we were 15 or 16 people and I was one of three women. Um, in the end, it was, uh, I was a different speed than the, the, the girls. One, unfortunately, we had to go home and one was in a different, we was moved to a different group. So I was moved to the boys group. So yeah, I was mostly with the boys most of the time because the way they, the way they split you is by uh, strength, uh, speed. So they put people in the same line, three or four in the same line. So you usually are put with the people who are the same speed. So I was mostly with boys. Um, there was only two or three mountains out of the 14 mountains I've climbed that had women. It's usually I'm on my own. And it is a very strange group of people. It's mostly uh, middle, middle, middle aged guys with ego problems. I mean, not everybody, <laughs> but there's a lot of um, testosterone on the mountain. Uh, some of the guys are amazing and they're friends still this day. And I, I consider them dear friends. But trust me, like mountaineering like attracts that kind of machoism. So it was very difficult sometimes. And some, and some people were, in addition to being sexist, they were a little bit racist that they think a girl from the Middle East has no place on the mountain. So I had to face these things. And trust me, uh, being, having that mentality in the city is okay because you can just avoid that person. But when you're in a, a team with people that constantly put you down as weak and not strong is not easy. And that's, there's two ways of handling that, either falling into the stereotype of what they tell you, who you are, or uh, proving them wrong. And I chose to prove them wrong. So I, I did everything better than them. I woke up earlier, I did my gear, you know, I was always trying to, to outdo the boys. Um, I even won an eating competition in Antarctica one day um, uh, to prove that, you know, we are just as capable as, as the boys. So you, you do meet people from all over the world. Really good question. And you are the one that has to handle it. And mm -hmm. not just in climbing, uh, ladies, we are an ambassador for our background, our religion, our nationality, and where we're from. So we have to, we have to walk with that responsibility. So I really felt like I had, because they haven't seen many Arab women. So imagine, I was like, oh my God, I don't want them to think Arab women are you know, not strong. So I was always trying to prove <laughs> <laughs> but I was as strong as the boys. <laughs> Good question. Fantastic. Thank you for that. Now, questions are coming in thick and fast now. Is it okay with everyone to have 15 minutes more? Is that okay? Because it's exactly 8.31. Can we have 15 minutes more? Are you okay with staying on a little bit longer? Otherwise, I have to ignore the questions, but there's just a few very good ones here. <laughs> are we okay with staying on? Fahima, Raha? Yes, yes sure. Yes. We'll, we'll make our answers short so that we can cover everyone, inshallah. Yes, please. So, Cynthia, great question. Do you have a specific strategy forward slash mindset to balance your feminine essence with leadership expectations that might be characterized as masculine? Cynthia, who is that to? Is that Fahima? Sure. Fahima or Raha, either. Or okay. Both. Let's go with Fahima. Yeah. I think uh, I'm a big believer of using your feminine, uh, feminine characters, you know, and to getting into any black box of a man. I think that's very, very important. Um, I actually uh, use it uh, also with my, uh, my team uh, who I work with and also with the higher. So I don't show um, uh, the feminine part. It's, it's, it, I mean, to show the other side of your, uh, this one will help you a lot in your convincing and you know uh, being more uh, caring of your social responsibilities 
um, you become, um, uh, you know, when, when, when people, when you talk a little bit about how a women, how you are actually driving change, uh, not only at workplace, but also within your family, like you show how much you have, you are proud of your children, your husband is supportive, try to use these things so that men do not take any negative point that, you know, she might be not encouraged or anything like that. Because I got this statement once uh, when when I, I wanted to decide that and someone told me, don't uh, do it because you are a woman and you will not have time. I immediately answered. I said, I have a big support from my husband, from my uh, my father. and So I think that's that's my answer to your question. Yes, use your uh, your power of being a good wife, a mother, a daughter. <laughs> Fantastic. Uh, next question from Abir. Uh, Raha, when did you feel there was a turning point from negative reactions to positive comments from the people around you or the community? Wow. Good question. I can tell you this. The, I, I flipped from being, oh my God, what is this girl doing? It's against culture, society. Ah, I flipped from that to we are proud of her. She is a representation of Saudi Arabia around three years ago, around two, three years ago, I think the honest truth, when social media became huge and people started to see what other women in the region are doing, mountaineering and climbing wasn't so bad. I think once things became really obvious <laughs> that there are people from all over the Arab world, whether they are um, uh, being a, uh, the top actress in the show or being uh, uh, engineers or whatever, I think they realized that athletics and sports isn't such a big deal. And also when, when brands that were very, very ingrained in society like Lipton um, and Chevrolet backed me up, they've become more and more acceptable. So I think the turning point was exactly two or three years ago. Uh, and it was an immediate change and I'm so proud to say that nowadays I'm no longer in that box of naughty people that have done crazy. I'm still one of those people that they say that is crazy, but I'm no longer in a negative uh, light, which I'm very proud of. Good question. So, so was it the community that's, that, that framed you as naughty? Who I think... I think they were just shocked because it was such a shocking thing to, to live on the mountain and do these big things. And I think it was just, a sh uh, this was around seven, six, seven years ago. Now it's become more and more acceptable to have women in, in, in the forefront of sport and in the forefront of business. So it is societal uh, expanding their, their, their horizon. And there's so much hope guys, I mean, ladies. I mean, if my, if my society has accepted me and embraced me and schools invite me and governmental entities invite me, means that things are evolving right it's incredible mm. well, we have here a beautiful question from Shama I can see she is a woman who is uh, curious and very interested in actually pushing the envelope so question for Raha we usually have conversations in the Arab world about breaking stereotypes especially for women in the Middle East but a lot of the time this attitude comes as a response to a particular Western audience how do you grapple with this, if at all? Uh, I, when people, a lot of people say, tell me you're westernized, I actually get offended and I don't get offended easily because I don't believe me wanting to be an athlete is a Western ideal. We have always had strong women in our culture. We have always had strong women in the Arab history. Always, from the time of the Prophet, there was always incredible women. It was only up to in the last, uh, let's say, 60 or 70 years in Saudi Arabia that, that uh, uh, there was a huge shift in mentality what a woman does. There was a huge, huge shift, very, very long story. It was only then that we were perceived. So I do not see this as a Western ideal. I don't see it as anything coming outside from my, my, own, my own land. Um, and to, to prove that, just look at our history. Read the amount of amazing, <laughs> incredible women we've had over the years. Okay, so it's not so in your mind, it's not a, a Western attitude because this is no. what's about this question. Is Sharma, is that correct? Is I don't see it as Western. Um, sorry, can you repeat what you just said? Could so the know? question here, you say, especially for women in the Middle East, this uh, this attitude comes as a response to a particular Western audience. Yes, but that um, I, I think maybe you slightly misinterpreted my question where I wasn't. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> no, no, that's okay. I mean, it, what you said was perfectly correct that um, 
um, you know, strong Arab women have always uh, existed and it's something that's always been ingrained in our culture and it's only much later that then things started to change a little bit, but people don't understand this. Um, and I, I guess what I'm really asking is, you know, a lot of the time these nuances fade into the background where um, Arab women who are doing amazing things and, and breaking these stereotypes, which is amazing and valid, sometimes this gets tokenized um, and, and, and used, like, um, used as, as props to represent um, Arab women that are you know, going beyond uh, the boundaries. Uh, for for a particular um, mode of thinking, where we spend a lot of time responding to um, you know people who have these um, not necessarily ideals, but it's it's more like we spend time responding to a particular audience rather than looking at the nuances and really addressing them um, within our own society. Does that make sense? I, I mean, I think I understand you. You shouldn't do any, anything for an audience. Yeah. It should never be done for someone other than your own passion and your belief and conviction. Yeah. That's step one. Don't never do anything for the sake of someone. And if someone has a wrong impression of you, uh, mm -hmm. it, you it's not your job to, to force them to change. Give them an opportunity to understand your point of view, but if they don't get it, then that's that's their shortcomings. But there's there will always be a stigma. There was always till now when I go to forums and events, I get really strange things like, "Oh my God, you're from you're you're Arab, you're from Middle East." I get till now I get these things. So you, we can't ex escape but, it. It's a Yeah, I get that. But see, the question usually comes from non-Arabs, right? Non-Arabs who are who, who are not Arabs who look at Arabs and or, and are like, um, "Oh wow." You know you're doing amazing things and it comes as a surprise yeah and a lot of surprise factor is what i'm really questioning like why is it so surprising that arab women can be amazing why because they're because people like to dramatize what's negative and in the region they want to dramatize us as oppressed so i'll tell you a very quick anecdote once uh, uh i was sitting down and there was a gentleman in the u.s sitting next to me at the table he asked where i was from i said i was from saudi arabia he said where is your your black thing so of course i wanted to play along he said where is your black thing i said uh, i am farah is like yeah where is that i'm like i'll tell you where it is when you tell me where your cowboy boots and spurs are <laughs> so the point is the point is a lot of times people like to judge others and don't look at their own evolution us as arab women like any part of the world we are we are we come from all shades and all backgrounds but what joins us together is that we are Arab women. It doesn't, the fact how you look and how you, how you, what you wear does not dictate who you are, your belief and who you are is. So immediately when someone does that to you, give it straight back to them, immediately. Sorry, that was a long one, but it was very important to, to differentiate. Fantastic. And thank you, Sharma, for a very, uh, a very interesting question. Amani's got her hand up. I'm going to lower your hand, Amani. Do you want to unmute yourself? Do you have a comment? Because I can see you have written, uh, you appreciate this concept that having strong women is not Western, but it was historically in our culture. Great thought. Is there an addition that you want to make to that, Amani? No? I can't hear anything, so if not... Yes. Oh, there you are. <laughs> yeah, yes, I'm here. Yeah, hello, everyone. Yeah, uh, uh, I'd like just to, to appreciate what uh, Raha said. Uh, we, we need this uh, spirit. We need to, uh, to raise our girls uh, with confidence that they are uh, strong ladies and women and they are ancestors of uh, strong uh, ladies uh, since the... Uh, old history wherever uh, they are from uh, Saudi Arabia, Egypt as me and all the Arab regions we have a, a lot history of very strong women so I, I think this is very important point and maybe this belief in, uh, in Raha subconscious mind that drive her uh, power to, to be something different so I, I think this is very good uh, spirit to raise in our uh, young generation and thank you. Uh, I'm sorry that I'm joined you late, but uh, and this is my first time. 
but I enjoy it and it will not be the last. Thank you. Inshallah. Thank you so much for joining us. Wonderful. Thank We've you. got three more minutes. Um, we could, I know that we could go on for hours because this is a great group and amazing speakers. Uh, I really can't get over how lucky we are to have both Raha and Fahima. And you see why there's just so much parallel, so many parallels between you amazing women, different contexts, but si similar uh, learnings for everybody. As we've got four minutes left, um, I would like to start drawing to a close. So I'm going to share my screen. Before I say my final thank yous to our distinguished, super distinguished guests, I'd like to share with you uh, a little bit about the next uh, steps. So what I'd like to encourage you, we are actually running these events um, on an ongoing basis, on a monthly basis. So what would like, what I'd love it, I would love it if you were able to do this is give us your feedback. So for those who can stay on after the end of this event, we can stay on the Zoom. It would be wonderful to have a little piece of feedback on the actual video, just a short clip, what you thought about it, your impressions, um, ideas that came out of the peer mentoring. So please give us your feedback. Also, follow us and share. So the Top of Her Game um, Instagram is at Top of Her Game and my personal Instagram is at Christina1502. We will be inshallah doing a, a, a group selfie at the end. So I would love to tag everyone. So please make sure we have all of your Insta names. Also make sure you can recommend a friend for our next uh, event. And as I said, please give us your feedback and we can't wait to see you again. So that's the last slide and I'm gonna stop sharing. Just make sure you've taken a note of the top of your game and my personal uh, Instagram uh, names. Now I'm gonna say thank you to the amazing Fahim Al-Bastaki and extraordinary Raha Maharak. Both of you have done such a marvelous job in inspiring this group. Thank you to all of you as well for being part of this. Uh, a lot of you, I would say about 70% of you had not experienced this before. So I'm hoping you will come back again, uh, inshallah. Um, I would also love it if I can have some nods and who would give us feedback after we finish this event. So stay on. Uh, is there anyone who can give us verbal feedback on the event, on video, on Zoom? Who's putting their hand up? Who can put a hand up? Nobody, nobody wants to give us feedback. No, everyone's too shy. Fahima, can I ask you? Uh, I think uh, there are marvelous uh, participants here, and I do encourage um, everyone to to join Christina's show again, not only as a as a participant, but maybe as a speakers, because I'm sure everybody here have something to share. Absolutely, absolutely. Okay. So, uh, well, Abir, oh. Abir. Abir have to say, so wants to say something. Abir, yeah, well, I, I just wanted to say that um, it's a great forum and, and thank you for organizing it and, and um, inviting me. And it's the first time that I know anything about this um, uh, forum. And I think what's really interesting for me, and also I was paired with somebody else who's in a similar situation. Um, we don't see women every day in, in, in the fields that we work in. So I sit on a board where I'm the only woman. I sit on an executive committee where I'm the only woman. Um, and I don't have anyone in my level, in my workplace, who is also a woman. So I don't get to have any kind of discussion like that. So I think it would be very, this, this for me is really interesting to speak to other women, even if they're from different industries or experiences. And that. So I think it would be, um, it's a great place going forward um, to, to meet women also who don't necessarily work with women and, and want to sound off about shared experiences. So. Um, it's, it's a great forum and, and um, thank you very much for inviting me to participate today. Uh, yeah, this, this means the world to me. Thank you so much for, um, for being with us, to be honest. I don't know if you can hear me. Can everyone hear me? You're breaking up. Yeah, a little bit breaking, but... Hold on, um, can you hear me? Oh, hold on, just bear with me. Ooh, maybe it's my computer. Uh, so just as well for closing, thank you so much. Uh, I will, there's a couple of comments that are coming through now, but uh, I'll read them. But I just want to say thank you for everyone for joining. I'm just wondering whether it's my laptop yes. that's having issues here. Can you hear me now? 
Yes. Ah, there we go. It was my laptop. So thank you ever so much once again for being with us. Thank you, Fahima. Thank you, Raha. Extraordinary woman. We adore you. Um, thank you to everyone. And uh, as my saying, thank you, Fahima, sharing this with me. We are very proud of you and for all the women, uh, you can do it and you do do it. Uh, thank you for showing the love, everyone. And inshallah, see you here very soon.